on the planning, uh, there are three titles for the three talks. And uh, I will take the liberty to switch a bit, but to change a bit my, my mind because, well, when I gave the titles, I looked at the program of the conference and I said, oof, all these guys will learn in two weeks what I learned in 10 years, so I should go fast. And then finally, I uh, decided to go a bit slower. So uh, I will uh, present uh, some of the arithmetical properties of dynamical system defined by polynomials. And uh, there are major questions in that subject, which is a very, uh, this is a large subject because it, as we will see, it covers uh, facts from uh, abelian varieties or elliptic curves. And there are a uh, large amount of conjectures, but there are also some theorems, and in particular, uh, an equidistribution theorem, which I will discuss uh, in the second lecture and maybe on this, in the third one. So, the, oh, so I have to understand how it works. Okay, so first I will uh, describe the, the theory of heights that one can uh, uh, play with when one has a dynamical system. So, the dynamical systems I'm interested in are, uh, come from algebraic geometry. So the simplest case is just the projective line over some field and a rational function, f, defining a map from p1 to p1. And, and more generally, I could study any closed subvariety x in pn and a map f from x to x, which is defined by homogeneous polynomials of the same degree, d. So I don't know if it's necessary to recall but uh, to define f from pn to pn i can take polynomials p0 p0 pn of same degree d and then there is a map uh, which maps the point of homogeneous coordinate x not x n to the point of homogeneous coordinates p naught of x, pn of x. And of course, this is only defined outside of the locus where the polynomials p naught, pn simultaneously vanish. And if I assume that there are no common zeros on x, then, so this is a rational map. And if uh, the p naught, pn has no common zero on x, then this may define a map from x to x. So basic examples are uh, elliptic curves with a map of multiplication by two, by some integer uh, k, well, say greater than two. Uh, there is a very interesting map, such map of P1, which is induced by elliptic curves. So if you look at the multiplication by, by k map on an elliptic curve, you can see that the x coordinates of the image depend only on the coordin x coordinate of the of the point, so there is a map uh, which is called a lattice map because it had been uh, studied by lattice in the 19th century. So uh, fk of x of p is x of kp. And uh, we will mostly see uh, rational varieties like p1 or elliptic curves uh, or abelian varieties because if you look at a protective curve of genus g greater than 2, then the riemann hurwitz formula allows you to prove that the only endomorphisms are automorphisms, and that there are only finite numbers of them. So the theory is not very interesting from the point of view of dynamical system. Yeah. That's nothing. So uh, the general setup will be that of a polarized dynamical system. So I take a projective variety X, an ample line bundle L on X, and a map F from X to X, such that the inverse image of the line model L is isomorphic to some power L to the G for some integer G, which I assume to be greater than two because I want to avoid uh, automorphisms. So the degree of F as a finite map is G to the power of dimension of X. And uh, this definition might look more general than the previous one where I 
I looked at uh, a rational map from PN to PN. Uh, but in fact, uh, it's not more general at all because a very nice theorem of Akrodin shows that if one considers any polarized dynamical system like that, there is a, some integer n and an embedding of the variety x in a protective space such that, well, given not, not necessarily by the line model L, but by some power of it, L to the n, and a map F on the protective space. So, uh, so the, it is really a map from P to P, not only a rational map. So it is given by homogeneous polynomials of degree D without common zeros like that. And this map commutes, well, this dynamical system F on the protective space on the projective space commutes with uh, the dynamical system on X. So it means that F of phi of X is phi of F of X. So in some sense, any polarized dynamical system is just a stable subvariety of some, uh, of some uh, endomorphisms of degree D on, on some projective space. Of course, if I give you any endomorphism of some projective space and I ask you how to find the stable subvarieties, then the, the answer will be difficult to find. <coughs> so it's quite interesting to know, to, well, to study them uh, in general. So the examples uh, are, well, some examples are follows. So abelian varieties with morphism uh, multiplication by an integer k greater than two. Uh, Remember, uh, maybe, I don't know if we heard of it, but uh, there is a theorem in the theory of abelian varieties called the cube theorem, which tells you that if the line rule L is symmetric, which means that uh, if I take the inverse image of the line rule L by the multiplication by minus one, then I, I get L again. Then uh, F star of L is isomorphic to L to the power K to the square. And so K to the square is greater than two if K is greater than two. So the projective space gives many examples. Uh, uh, other examples very close to projective space are toric varieties. So varieties are uh, compactifications of a torus. So a torus is something like C star to some power, uh, let's say D, not N. And, uh, and I consider compactifications of the torus, so X is the protective variety, so that the multiplication map on T, which is map from T cross T to T, extends to a map from T cross X to X. So these are very interesting varieties that can be described by combinatorics. And uh, they can give you many choices of uh, dynamical systems. Uh, and for that, just look at the multiplication by k map on the torus, x to xk, and one proves that this map extends to a self map of the toric variety, which, uh, as the required properties, right? F upper star L is L to the power K. And of course, one can consider products or uh, quotients of those examples. For example, the, the lattice map is a quotient of the multiplication by K map on the elliptic curve. And uh, I'll give you a theorem well, uh, which incorporates uh, results of Bouville, Fakhrodin, and Zhang. Uh, so if X, F, L is a polarized dynamical system over the complex numbers, I assume that X is smooth. And uh, so F upper star L is L to the D for some D greater than two. Then uh, the first result is the Kodaira dimension of X is non-positive. Uh, Less, than, less or equal to zero. So this means that there are no uh, uh, 
where there are essentially, essentially no uh, covariant tensors on the uh, contravariant tensors on the, on, the, on the variety. And if the first sharing class of X is zero, then X is a quotient of an abelian variety. So this means that there is, uh, I'm taking it. I should not erase that one. So if A is an abelian variety, and you look at the multiplication by K map on A, and then your dynamical system is just a quotient, meaning that there is a map from uh, a finite map pi from A to X. In fact, X is a quotient of A by a finite group. And uh, this diagram commutes. And in some sense, the dynamics, the dynamical properties of F are very close to that of A. So if one knows what happens for abelian varieties, then we, want me, we might be OK. And uh, Jean proved that if oh, that uh, the, is the first chunk class of X is not 0, then X is uniroll. So. For surfaces, uh, one has a quite a precise classification, uh, not of dynamical systems, but of surfaces admitting a dynamical system. So this classification is essentially due to Nakay Nakayama. It's, it's quite recent. And uh, the examples, the only examples are abelian surfaces, where the map can only be multiplication by some integer. Hyper elliptic surfaces, uh, which admit an etal cover by the product of two elliptic curves. So it's still uh, it's a quotient of some abelian surface. You have toric surfaces. And uh, ruled surfaces over an elliptic curves. So these examples are very interesting because if one take a rank two vector bundle. on an elliptic curve, E. So you have the P of M, the protective vector bundle, which is a, so a family of protective, protective lines parameterized by the elliptic curve. And uh, there are two cases where, where one can have dynamical systems on such a variety. And one which I would like to discuss is a case where M is a direct sum of the trivial line bundle and the line bundle L, which is a torsion. So it means that L to the power, to the power N is equal to OE. So then uh, in X, um, we can take the, well, uh, in X we have two, two sections, one which I could write zero and the other, which I could denote as S infinity. So. And if I remove the, the image of, the, of these sections, what I get here is something which is an algebraic group, in fact. It is a, an, an extension of, a, of the elliptic of E by the torus, by the multiplicative group. So G is isomorphic to an extension, an extension uh, by the multiplicative group. And so this is a simple example of a semi-abelian variety. And a semi-abelian variety fit also in the theory of dynamical systems, but it was only when the, only, uh, they, fit. they don't fit really within the framework of polarized dynamical systems, but those who correspond to a line model which is torsion do fit in the theory. 
So, and the last example which I want to, to state is, in fact, a non-example. That is, that if you take a smooth hypersurface of dimension uh, greater than one and of degree uh, at least three in some projective space, then it does not admit any uh, endomorphism of degree greater than one. So, this shows you uh, that uh, such varieties uh, won't uh, admit uh, an interesting dynamical system. Uh, in the 90s and till now, there, are, there have been other examples of dynamical systems which are related to polarized dynamical systems but don't fit in, in the picture, and I would like to mention them, which are uh, automorphisms, in fact, of a complex or well, smooth projective surface with positive entropy. So I do not want to define what entropy is, but uh, it means that uh, for, for people of ergodic theory, the fact that the entropy is positive means that the dynamic is interesting. And uh, in that case, one can find uh, within the Picard group a plane, I mean a two-dimensional two subspace, on which, which is stable under the action of the dynamic system, I mean dynamical system, and so that uh, this action on this plane is di diagonal diagonalizable. Okay, so it has two eigenvalues. Uh, the one is the exponential of the entropy, lambda, which is greater than one because the entropy is positive, and the other is the inverse of the entropy, so it's smaller than one. And these two eigenvectors are not really line bundles. They are only line bundles with real coefficients. But uh, it is possible to develop the theory so that to incorporate such objects, and this gives you a theory of canonical heights, as I will describe later. And the example of Silverman is just a K3 surface in P2 cross P2. So you take the intersection of a 1, 1 hypersurface. So it's an equation which has a degree 1 in the first set of variables and degree 1 in the second set of variable, variable. And a 2, 2 hypersurface, so degree 2 in the first set and still 2 in the second one. And uh, taking uh, uh, this uh, 2, 2 hypersurface gives you a possibility to uh, gives you an, in, an involution because if you have a solution of one quadratic equation, then you can switch to the other one. So you have this, you have uh, two involutions, sigma two and sigma one, and if you take the composition of them, then you'll get uh, an automorphism because the composition of two involutions is, is an automorphism, and uh, the entropy is equal to the, uh, well, it's a logarithm of seven plus four square root of three, so it, it's positive. So this is an example of Silverman, and there are some others. So <clears throat> you have probably heard of the neuronted height on elliptic curves, Henry. Yeah. So uh, for the case of dynamical systems, <laughs> there is a generalization. So I take a, so for elliptic curves, remember that you have a, Say if we have k upper star L equals to L to the power k squared. And uh, the neuronted height has the virtue that the, the height of k times a point is equal to k squared times the height of the point. And uh, for dynamical systems, it's possible to define a similar height, which I will call the canonical height. So I first consider any height function relative to the fixed line model L. So I remember that this means that if phi is an embedding of x in a projective space such that phi of star of O of 1 is L to the power n, so some po the power Ln is a semi linear series at the hi higher hyperplane section of the embedding phi, then h of x is equal to the veil height of the image of phi of x divided by n up to unbounded amount. And the 
machinery of height tells you that the difference of the height of f of x and d times the height of x is bounded when x varies along all uh, algebraic points of the variety x. And, uh, well, the Tate's trick allows you to prove that there is a unique height function, which I call h with a hat, so that it is to, to, mention, to recall that it is canonical, which is relative to the line model L, such that the, the height, the canonical height of f of x is precisely equal to d times the height of x. So the proof of this theorem is, is very easy. Uh, it's just, I don't know, well, I should give the proof at some, at some point. So it's just an application of the fixed point theorem. For instance, you look you define hn of x equals to uh, 1, you, you take the nth iterate of x, you look at it, as it, you compute its height, and you divide by d to the power n, and uh, you can prove that hn of x converges to, to something which you call h hat of x when as n goes to infinity. So <coughs> I want to discuss some consequences for, of this uh, canonical height uh, concerning uh, periodic points on dynamical systems. So the major virtue of height is that the, if I, is given by Northcott theorem, with what, what is called Northcott theorem nowadays, meaning that there are only finitely many points of bounded height and bounded degree. So for any integer d and b, there are only finitely many points x, such that the field of definition of x has degree less than d, and the height of x is less than d. And as a consequence, one uh, recovers Northcott's original uh, motivation in fact, Northcott's theorem is precisely what is within the red box. So, uh, first of all, the canonical height of any point is non-negative, and the points uh, whose height is zero are precisely the periodic points. So the proof is, is easy. So look at some point, uh, some algebraic point, x. First of all, you can take a finite extension, E of f, such that the point x belongs to x of a. So we will as first assume that the height, the canonical height of x is non-positive. And we will prove that in fact the height is zero and that the point is periodic, pre-periodic. So first of all, the height of the nth iterate, the canonical height of the nth iterate is equal to d to the n times the canonical height of x. So this is non-positive. But all these points, fn of x, have bounded degree, uh, at, at most uh, the degree of e over f, and bounded height, less, because the canonical height is less than zero. And Northcott's theorem, th th that one, implies that the sequence, well, the set x, f of x, f square of x, and so on, the, sex, the set of iterates, is finite. So this means that there are two integers, n and p, with p positive, such that fn of x equals f uh, n plus p of x. So fn of x is pre-periodic and x is pre-periodic. Pre-periodic means that some iterate is periodic. Pre-periodic means that some iterate is periodic. Okay. Uh, f is a number field for the theory of height. It was up, up, up. Well, uh, over function fields, the theory is a bit more complicated because uh, Northcott's theorem, uh, Northcott's finiteness theorem is not true over function fields in general, so. So, 
So, uh, well, some remarks. The first one is that uh, considering the set of periodic points is considering a large set of points because the set of periodic points is uh, the risky dense. The set of periodic points is the risky dense. So, I know of two proofs of this assertion. One is, uh, belongs to ergodic theory and it is essentially due to Brian and Duval. And, uh, because it shows you that the closure of the set of, of periodic points is a support of a measure of which, for, for which the, the risky subsets have zero measure. So this means that the, the risky closure of periodic points, this implies that the risky closure of periodic points uh, will, uh, will be equal to the whole variety. And there is a proof, uh, a completely arithmetic proof which is due to Fakhrudin and Poonen. Well, it appears in a paper by Fakhrudin, and then the main lemma is due to Poonen, so <laughs> it's hard to tell uh, who proves that. But nevertheless, the, the hard part of the proof is due to Ruchowski. It's a theorem in the theory of, uh, in the model theory of fields with, well, fields, not fields with difference, but fields together with automorphisms. And so, uh, this gives you an arithmetic proof of the fact that the periodic points are the risky dense. And if you uh, only want to know that the set of pre-periodic points is the risky dense, then it's easy to write down a proof because take V, the risky closure of the set of pre-periodic points. So the image of a pre-periodic point is a pre-periodic point, so F of V is equals to V, well, um, no, so F minus one of V is equals to V, and the inverse image by F of a pre-periodic point is still a pre-periodic point, so F of V is equal to V. And now, this equality implies that the degree of the restriction of the map F to V is equal to the degree of F. And if you look at, uh, the degree of F restricted to V is D to the power of dimension of V. The degree of F is D to the power of dimension of X. So you have the equalities. Uh, sorry? D, exactly, D is uh, everywhere. D is such that F of star of L is isomorphic to LD. So D is K squared if F is a multiplication by K on an elliptic curve. Oh. So uh, <coughs> I want to give you examples of pre-periodic points on periodic points. So the, on abelian varieties, if the most interesting morphism is multiplication by some integer K, and then uh, a point is pre-periodic for this map, if and only if, it is a torsion point. Uh, and in that case, the canonical height that one recovers is precisely the neuronted height. For the projective line, if you look at the map x to xk, then the pre-periodic points are exactly zero and infinity, and the roots of unity in the affine line. And the canonical height is exactly the veil height because it's a standard thing that is proved in the height theory that uh, the height has this canonical property. And in that case, uh, Northcott theorem about the, the fact uh, that points of height zero, well, that, that points of height zero as uh, are pre-periodic point is a classical old result of Kronecker uh, that uh, well, point which are algebraic integers and all of which conjugates have absolute value at most one are roots of unity, except zero. So. so this finishes the first part of the talk, which was the description of the height machine that uh, one can play with when one has in dynamical systems. And the second part of the talk uh, is devoted to conjectures. So the first one, uh, so, so first, well, I've put names on 
most, most, uh, almost all of the conjectures. So, so these names are not an accurate. Uh, uh, you, you should not believe that those guys did conjecture uh, those conjectures and so those uh, statements. Uh, but, but all of these statements are inspired by conjectures of the named people. So the first one I named is lemma. So if you consider a dynamical system uh, over a number field, and uh, you could ask if the height of any point, the canonical height of any, any point, is bounded below by something positive if the point is not pre-periodic. And uh, the best uh, lower bound that one can expect is some constant divided by the degree of the point. And it is the best, uh, uh, the best conjecture that one can make because if one takes a pre-image of the point X, then the degree of the field generated by the pre-image will be at most d times the degree of the field generated by, by x, and the height will be divided by g. So one cannot expect anything stronger, and Lema expected uh, that result in the case of veil height, so in the classical case of the projective line. And what is known about this conjecture in general? That almost nothing. <laughs> if you look at the projective line, so the and the classical veil height, then uh, it is easy to see that if you, the height of points which are non-units or non-totally real have the, have, the, have the height bounded below by such an expression, constant divided by the degree, but uh, nothing more is known except from, well, the, strong, the strongest result which is known is uh, the Wawolski estimate. Uh, which claims that the height of x is at least a constant divided by the degree to the power one plus epsilon. In fact, Dobrovolsky had something where the epsilon is replaced by log of the degree divided by log log of the degree, but um, well, <laughs> and to, to some, to some, with some exponents, so this is enough. And uh, Michel Laurent uh, proved uh, an assertion which is similar to that of Dobrovolsky for elliptic curves, but the one is, is replaced by three. And both proofs re rely on classical Diophantine approximation. So the second conjecture uh, is due to Morton and Silverman, and uh, I had not, not, not enough place to put the picture of Morton, so I apologize to him. So, uh, and this fact, this is not uh, Morton Silverman's conjecture because Silverman's conjecture is only for the pro projective space. So consider a dynamical system, a polarized one. So, and then you could ask how many periodic points or pre-periodic points there are over a given number field. You know that there are finitely many because they have heights, canonical height zero, so the North Coast finiteness theorem tells you that there are finitely many pre-periodic points. But you could ask if there is a bound which depends only on the dimension of the variety, the degree of the embedding of the variety given by the ample line model, the degree of the map, and the uh, degree of the field of definition. So uh, the fact theorem which I uh, presented earlier uh, implies that it is sufficient to treat the case of the projective space over the field of uh, rational numbers. And in that case, you get uh, Morton Silverman's conjecture. But uh, if you look at an abelian variety, then the dimension is what it is. The degree of f, well, for, for a map f, you could take multiplication by two, then the, bound, the degree is, the, the integer d is just two. The, well, look at a, say, principally polarized uh, abelian variety, then uh, uh, capital D, is equal to factorial of the dimension. And so if that conjecture is true, then uh, as a consequence, a much more uh, uh, very general 
statement in the theory of abelian varieties is true, namely that you can bound the number of torsion points only in terms of the field of definition, uh, of the degree of the field of definition and uh, the dimension of the variety. And that result for specified to abelian varieties is far from being known except for elliptic curves where it has been proved by Mazer uh, when the field is equal to Q, by Merel uh, in general. So uh, you see that the conjecture is w widely open. Uh, but there are uh, many interesting results we, uh, in a similar nature to uh, those results uh, on Merel's theorem, uh, which were known earlier. Namely, if you bound the ramification at some places, then you can say something. And so the second, uh, the third conjecture is manin Murphy's conjecture, was an analog of manin Murphy's conjecture. So we will uh, consider a polarized dynamical system of a, well, say, an algebraically closed field of characteristic, characteristic zero. I denote by P the set of pre-periodic points. And remember that P is the risky dense in the variety X. So now if V is a sub-variety of X, I could look, I can look at the pre-periodic points which lie in V. And uh, the conjecture is that this set of pre-periodic points, so P intersected with V, will be the risky dense in V if and only if there is a strong geometric reason for that, namely that the variety V is itself pre-periodic, meaning that if you look at the iterates, V, F of V, F square of V, etc., then you will fall back to some, some, some iterates at some time. So it is easy to see that if you consider a pre-periodic sub-variety V, so then uh, if you assume that Fn of V is Fn plus P of V, then the pre-periodic points in V are the risky dense in V because you have a dynamical system in V, you, you can, you, well, not in V, but you look at the nth iterate of, of V, so let W be You have the map f to the power p, which goes to w to w. But pre-periodic points for, the, for fk are exactly the pre-periodic points for f. And uh, so p intersect, intersected w is the risky dense in w. And from that, you can prove that the set of pre-periodic points in v are the risky dense in v. So the difficult part of the conjecture is the converse. And uh, it is far from being known. So the case of abelian varieties was conjectured by Manin and Mumford and has been proved by Michel Renault in the 70s, beginning of the 70s. So in that case, you, the theorem you get is that the set, you consider an abelian variety, A, a sub-variety, B, and you assume, whoops, there is something missing on the slide. So, so you assume, uh, write it. So you have an abelian variety. A sub variety V. Assume that the torsion points of A lying in V is the risky dense. then V is of the form P plus B, where B is a sub-variety, is a sub-abelian variety, and P is a torsion point. So the case of toric varieties where well, the morphism uh, is just the extension of multiplication by k on the torus is also true and it has, it has been true by, shown by Michel Laurent. And for uh, general dynamical systems, 
except uh, almost nothing is, is known. So there is a, uh, a thesis by uh, Niemar in something like 95, uh, who he studied the maps on P1 times P1, which are of the form uh, xy goes to f of x g of y, so for, some, for two uh, rational functions f and g. And the assumption, well, one of the assumptions he, he proposes is that the Julia sets of f and g are different. So in that case, he can really show, pass, he can really uh, determine all the stable sub-varieties and, uh, and prove the conjecture. And in fact, the preperiodic sub-varieties, well, the preperiodic curves, are only the trivial one, uh, x times p1 and p1 times y. So uh, there is a, a strengthening of, uh, of man in Mumford's conjecture where height functions uh, intervene. And uh, well, the, the name is Bogomolov. Yeah? So I still consider a polarized dynamical system of our number field F. And I consider the canonical height, H hat. And then uh, if man in Mumford's conjecture is true, if, and if V is a subvariety of X, which, uh, and I, well, I take V a subvariety of X and V not the union of all preperiodic subvarieties lying in V, then uh, outside V not, in V minus V not, there will be no preperiodic points because preperiodic points are subvarieties. So it is natural to ask if the height, the canonical height, is bounded below outside V0. Of course, in a, in a preperiodic subvariety, you can divide points. You can take pre-images, and then this divides the height at infin uh, indefinitely. So the height will not be bounded below by something except by zero. <laughs> but if you exclude all preperiodic subvarieties, then you might hope that the height is bounded below. So in fact, uh, Bogomolov had conjectures this. Uh, when x is a Jacobian of a curve uh, of genus greater than 2, and v is not, not a curve, but uh, when, uh, see, v is a curve. If, in fact, z curve, the curve. Uh, so this generalization has been proposed by Shou Zhang. And uh, I should say that uh, it, it, it is a theorem, this conjecture it is a theorem in the case of abelian varieties. Uh, it is a theorem uh, proved by, uh, by Zhang after a breakthrough by Emmanuel Humeau who showed the case conjecture by Bogomolov. And then uh, Zhang generalized the conjecture. And uh, the way to the proof of the Bogomolov conjecture for abelian varieties is uh, result of equidistribution, which will be the topic of my talk tomorrow. And so uh, equidistribution means that uh, when we look at points, well, it's a set of points, a finite set of points, they will define a measure. The, you take the counting measure, find the discrete measure supported by those points. You divide by the number of points so that it is a probability measure. And you will look at the behavior of those measures when the number of points grows. And uh, the limit measures that one will obtain uh, are uh, very important in the theory of ergodic, well, in the theory of dynamical systems. And so I describe them first. So I still look at the polarized dynamical system over the complex numbers. D is an integer. Uh, such that uh, f up of star L is L to the G. And uh, okay, so I described the canonical probability measure, which is supported by the complex points of the variety. So to define this variety, you just need to take any volume form on the variety. So it's a differential form of maximal degree in the sense of, uh, uh, so the degree is two times the dimension of uh, of the algebraic variety x. 
And then uh, what you can do with this form is to pull it back using the dynamical system, F. So you pull it back n times, and you divide it by n d to the power uh, minus n dimension of x. So that you still have a probability measure at each point. And the basic, basic fact is that uh, when n grows to infinity, these volume forms converge to a probability measure nu f on x of c. So this probability measure satisfies two uh, functional equations. The first one is, uh, is easy to understand. It says that the direct image of this measure by the map f is equal to the measure uh, nu it again. And uh, the second uh, assumption is well, a bit more, di more, more difficult to understand because I look at the pre-image of a measure. So this is strictly forbidden by uh, integration theory. <laughs> There is no pre-image of measures in integration theory. So what happens here, that uh, the map F is not any continuous map. It's something defined by a polynomial. So I can define the pre-image of a measure um, so I have to integrate some function phi. And to do that, I just integrate on x the function uh, against the measure mu, the function uh, uh, phi of y. So I integrate the sum of the values of the function phi at all the pre-images of the point. And the fact that f is a polynomial implies that's, that this function is continuous in X. So this makes sense. Well, uh, it should be flat to the... Uh, it is. Do, 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 do. No, it does not depend on omega, but it does not mean that... It does not depend on omega, but... Uh, uh, of course, uh, no, no, it, it, it does. If you take the map x to x, x, x to goes to x squared on the projective line, then you have uh, three measures. Well, you have, a, you have a cone of measures satisfying these two equations. And the, the, ex, well, the extreme points of this cone are the Dirac mass at zero, the Dirac mass at infinity, and uh, the Haar measure on, the, on the, the, that, that measure. So you, and you, have, you can take linear combinations of them. So you begin with something which is a smooth volume form, and, and then you pull it back. So mu, mu uh, may, may have singularities and has singularities at very bad singularities. So, uh, <coughs> so if you take an abelian variety, then the measure you get is the Haar measure on the abelian variety. If you take a Turing variety, say if you take P1 and the map X to goes to X squared, then you get the map, uh, the integration map on the circle. And more generally, the integration map on the maximal compact subgroup of the torus. So uh, this measure is very important in the theory of complex dynamical systems. So it is a unique measure of minimal entropy. So means that you have something, a characterization of, of that measure. Uh, that's the first point. The second point, if you look at uh, periodic points, points of order n, and you take the integration map on that set of points and you divide by the cardinality of this set, then this discrete measure converges to the measure mu f. So this is an equidistribution theorem in the framework of complex dynamical systems. And they go back to Brolin and Lubitsch in the 60s, and uh, Brian Duval and Gage. So they are quite recent in the case of general uh, algebraic varieties. Moreover, uh, well, one can show that this measure does not charge uh, well, the risky subsets, strict subsets. So this implies that the 
the risky closure of the support of this measure is equal to the whole variety. But remember that if you look at uh, P1, then the, the, the support of the measure was just the circle. So this is a closed subset, which is far from being equal to the Riemann sphere. So <coughs> now what means uh, equidistribution in my arithmetical context? So I fix uh, one for all an embedding of the algebraic closure of F in C. Okay. So now if X is any algebraic point, I can define a discrete probability measure, delta of X, on X of C, which will be invariant under the Galois group of C over F, as follows. And so I, def I denote by S the degree of the field generated by X. So um, by X1, XS, the set of conjugates. And I simply define the measure delta of X to be the mean the, of all the direct measures, delta XI, so supported as conjugates. So this is a discrete measure. And uh, the equidistribution question is the following. If you take a sequence of points in sequence of algebraic points, satisfying the following two assumptions, so I will read the second one first. So you assume that the height goes to zero, go, the height of this point goes to zero. And then you assume that for any strict variety V, there are only finitely many integers N, such that Xn belongs to V. So I will comment on that later. So then, granting these two assumptions, is it true that the measures delta of Xn converge to the canonical measure mu f? So, uh, Let's say, let's look at the example of the, project, the Riemann sphere and the map x, x go to x squared. Then you can look at the uh, nth root of unity. What you know is that the, the nth cyclotomic polynomial is irreducible, so the, the conjugates of some nth roots of unity over q is just all uh, exponential two by i k over n for k and i co-prime. And it's, well, it's easy, well, uh, it's not, not difficult to show that when n goes to infinity, this set of points converge, it could distribute to the integration uh, measure on the circle. Without the condition that the k and n are, are co-prime, it is easy, it's just a series of Riemann sums. So then one has to play a bit with this Copromality condition, but it's not uh, serious. So I, I need to comment the assumption, the first assumption. So if the some variety V was containing infinitely many Xn, then uh, and if the conjecture for well, if the conjecture was true, then the limit some well, some uh, limit value of the me of the measures delta of Xn will be supported by V. And uh, we have seen that the support, the Zariski, uh, the Zariski closure of the support of the canonical measure mu f is equal to x. So it's not possible uh, that such a theorem is true if one removes the assumption that no subvariety contains infinitely many points. So uh, in the case of abelian varieties, this theorem has been proved by Spiro, Ilmo, and Zhang. And this is, well, the main tool for the proof of Bogomolov's conjecture by Ilmo and Zhang. So the, the proof of Bogomolov's conjecture goes by using twice the equidistribution theorem for in two related uh, contexts, and then uh, showing that these two equidistribution theorems are inco incompatible, and so there is a contradiction somewhere. And, and uh, the inter interesting case for uh, people in uh, ergodic theory is the case of the projective line. And there are two kinds of proofs in this case. There is uh, one proof by Otissier, which uses Arakelov theory as was used by uh, Spiro and Mohanzang. And the other proof by uh, two groups of people, Baker Rumley and Favre Rivera Letelier, use potential theory. So uh, I won't give many details on that proof, but uh, 
remember that potential theory uh, is very closely li re re linked to number theory since the works of uh, Fekete and Chagall in the beginning of the 20th century. So it's not uh, a surprise that potential theory allows you to allows people to prove result in number theory. And uh, in fact, the equidistribution conjecture is not a conjecture, it's a theorem now. But it was a conjecture uh, some months ago, so uh, I received a preprint in, in March where, by a student of Shou Zhang. Uh, and the proof of the general theorem uses Arakadov geometry. And uh, I should mention, I will be maybe talk a bit on that uh, at the, on the third talk, that there is a periodic analog of this equidistribution theory. But uh, this is, well, for, for these analogs, one has to, one, uh, well, it's not sufficient to look at the CP points, where the classical points uh, over the algebraic closure of QP, or let's say the completion of the algebraic closure of QP. One really has to look at uh, what happens on Berkovich spaces. And these Berkovich spaces are the place where a distribution takes place. So, so in the next and last conjecture is uh, the existence of dense orbits. So consider again a polarized dynamical system of a number field. Does the, uh, um, the, how do I say? So well, the question is there. Does there exist a point P over Q bar whose orbit is a risky dense in X? So uh, the set of pre-periodic points is countable for any integer n. There, is, there are only finitely many points of order n. And uh, so this, with that you can prove that the set of pre-periodic points is countable. So the existence of non-pre-periodic points over Q bar is not totally trivial. In fact, it could be possible that over Q bar all points are pre-periodic because there are countably, countably many of those. You see, uh, when, when Vail uh, in Lang's file about uh, Shimura Tanyama Vail, uh, Vail answered at some place that it might well be true that uh, all elliptic curves are modular because both sets over Q are modular because both sets are countable. So, <laughs> so nevertheless, uh, uh, one well, it's easy using the height machine to show that there are non-preperiodic points. Because if all points of a Q bar were preperiodic, then uh, the height will be zero. On the, and it's well known that the height is not bounded of a Q bar. So the, at least there are non-preperiodic points. But it might be possible that any point in Q bar lies in a strict Subvariety, which will be stable under the dynamics, but uh, but also f when the dynamical system is an abelian variety, then the theorem is, but the, the question is true so as a positive answer. And over uncountable fields, so say, uh, then the result is also true using recent recent theorems of uh, Campana and Americ about the structure of such dynamical systems, but. Uh, the result is totally open, say for a dynamical system on P2, given by three polynomials without common zero. So, nothing else. So, that's all. Thank you.